581, 10.2. Right, so if you need to pause to find that page, go ahead. If not, just keep watching. All right. So today, again, we're working with a picture graph. Okay, remember we used the picture graph uh, last time we worked, right? Remember we saw the people, right, on the graph that represented uh, one child. So today we're doing another picture graph, okay? So we're gonna uh, finish filling in this piece of the graph. Asaf has six baseballs. He has four bats. Does he have more baseballs or bats? Okay, so what we need to do is they want us to draw circles to show um, the piece of the graph that is missing. So it says he has six baseballs. So for each baseball, we need to draw a circle. One circle goes in each box. So he has six of them. So we need six circles. One, two, Okay, so you want six circles. Go back and double check. Okay, six circles. That stands for the six baseballs he has. Then he has four bats. So again, they want us to draw circles to represent the items. So he has four bats. So how many circles do we need? Four. So let's draw our four circles. One. So I have four circles to represent the bats. So six baseballs, four bats. Okay, now they ask us, does he have more baseballs or bats? So which one is more? Is it more baseballs or more bats? Yeah, baseballs. So we're gonna circle baseballs down here. There's more baseballs. There's six and this is only four. We can compare them. Right, match them up and see, oh, there's more baseballs. All right, so boys and girls, not only are we going to be using our graphs today, maybe making some graphs, okay, but we'll also be answering questions about the graphs. All right, if you need to pause any time, you can. If not, I'm going to keep going. All right, take a look at the top. Are there more black or white sheep in the picture? Make a picture graph to find out. So again, here's our graph. Here's our title at the top, sheep in the meadow. Here's what we're looking at. We're looking at the black sheep and the white sheep. So we need to see how many black sheep are in the meadow. We need to finish this graph first, right? Because there's definitely more than just one. So let's count them all. One two, three. So we need to show three circles in this graph to stand for the three black sheep. So I'm gonna trace this one. One, two, three. Down here it says each circle stands for one sheep. Okay, so today they're having us make circles on our graph. Now that we did the black sheep, how many white sheep? Well, let's count them and cross them off as we go. One, two, three, four, five. How many, how many white sheep? Five. So we need to make five circles, one in each box. Okay. If you made five circles, you should have filled that whole row. One, two, three, four, five. Remember, only one circle can go in each box. We don't want more than that. Okay, it says there are, there are more blank sheep. Which one has more, black or white? Yeah, the white sheep have more. So we are going to write white. Copying my word right there. There are more white sheep. That's where I copied my word from. Okay, if 
you need to pause, go ahead. If not, I'm gonna keep going. All right, so again, here's another graph down here. Okay, our favorite pet, cats, dogs. Each circle stands for one child. It says, do more children like cats or dogs? Ask 10 friends which pet they like better. Well, we don't have 10 people in front of us. So what we're going to do is I'm gonna give us some numbers to work with, okay? So let's see. Hmm, I think there's four people who like cats. So if there's four people who like cats, how many circles do we need to put? Four, so make your four circles. That stands for the four people who like cats. Okay, so if four people like cats, six people like dogs. What do I do? How do I show six people like dogs? Yeah, I'm gonna make six circles. All right. So now my graph shows my 10 people because if I counted these all together, there would be 10 children. Okay, four like cats, six like dogs. Use the picture graph to answer each question. How many children chose cats? So let's count. How many did you get? Four, four children like cats. How many children chose dog? So what are we gonna do? Yeah, count them. Did you get six? Yes. Look, one, two, three, four, five, six. Which pet did more children choose? So look at this graph. Did more children choose the cats or did more choose the dogs? What did you pick? What one did more people like? Yeah, more people chose dogs. So we wanna circle dogs, right? This shows a bigger number. Remember, more means bigger, bigger number than this. Okay. All right. Here's another graph. It says our favorite activity, reading, computer, sports. All right, you ready? I'm gonna fill in this graph. I want you to copy my graph, you ready? For reading, we're gonna choose two. For computers, we're gonna do, hmm, we'll do four. And sports, we're gonna say four. Okay, if you need to pause, if you need to pause to fill this in, go ahead. If not, I'm gonna keep going, but you need to have this filled in to answer the questions. All right, how, ready? And you're gonna fill these in, you ready? Use the picture graph to answer the questions. Remember, each circle stands for one child. How many children chose reading? So look at your graph. How many children chose reading as their favorite activity? Fill in your number. What did you pick? How many? Two. One, two. How many children chose computer and sports? Now, how are we going to solve that? If they want us to know how many people chose computer and sports, 
What do we do with those two numbers? Are we adding them together or subtracting them? If we want to know how many chose this and this, we need to add them. We're going to add them together because they want to know, how, not compare them, how many all together. So how many people chose computers? Yeah, four. How many children chose soccer? Or, I'm sorry, sports? Four. So remember, we're adding them together because they want to know computer and sports together. So four plus four. I bet some of you know those double specs. Go ahead and write your answer in. If you don't know four plus four is a double spec, you can count those circles or you can put it on your fingers. Four plus four is eight, okay? So you could have did it on your fingers, four plus four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Or you could have counted these circles for the computer and the sports. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, eight children all together chose computer and sports. Which activity did the most children choose? This is kind of tricky for ours. Hmm, well, was it reading? Did most people choose reading? No. Look at computer and sports. What do we say about those two? They are equal. So even though they're equal, did they choose these the most? They did. So computers and sports were both chosen the same amount, but they were chosen the most. So that was a tricky one. We would circle both of those because they're exactly the same, so both of them become the most. Did all your classmates make picture graphs that look the same? So I want you to think about this. You're watching this video. Does you, do you think someone else's, else's graph looks just like yours if they're watching the same video? They should, so we wanna say, Yes, right? Your classmates, all videos should look the same because we used the same numbers and the same categories, okay? The only way they would look different is if they didn't watch this, right? Remember, what did I say at the beginning? It needs to be exactly the same. So yes, everyone's graph would look the same. All right, think smarter. Write your own question about the graph. Well, when we're writing our own question about a graph, we could think about what can we ask? Hmm, well, if it's about reading computers and sports, could I ask about milk? What they like, what kind of milk they drink the most? No, because that doesn't have to do with our graph. We have to ask a question about our graph. Hmm, well, if they already asked us what activity was chosen the most, how can we turn that around? What activity was chosen the least, right? The fewest, fewest amount of times. So one of the questions that we could ask, and I'm not gonna have you write this down today, I'm just, we're just talking about it, is what, what activity was chosen the least? What would the answer be to that question? What activity was chosen the least? Yeah, reading. Reading only has two. We could ask other questions as well. Like, instead of asking how many children chose computer and sports, we could say how many children chose computer and reading. Okay. We could just say how many children chose sports. There's a lot of questions we can ask. We can even ask comparing questions. How many more children chose sports than reading? And we'd have to do a minus problem to solve, right? When we compare, we make a minus problem. So there's many different questions we can ask, but they all have to go with our, with our graph. If they don't have to do with our graph, we can't ask them. Right. When you're ready to turn, you can. If you're not, just pause and turn when you're ready. Okay. At the top. 
Matt made this picture graph to show the paint colors his friends like best. So here is favorite paint color. So blue, red, and green were the choices. So let's see, that's how many people chose blue. That's how many people chose red. That's how many people chose green. Number 10 asks, how many people chose a paint color? Hmm, so each circle stands for one child. How do we figure out how many children there are all together who chose a paint color? Hmm, well, if each circle stands for one child, could we count all the circles? Yes, each circle is one child. So if we want to know how many children there were all together who did this survey, we should count them all. So let's count all our circles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are ten children who chose their favorite paint color. Okay, so that's how many children chose their paint color. Why didn't I count this one right here? Because it's not on the graph, right? These, this is the graph information. This is just telling us what that's what each circle means. Very good. How many fewer children chose green than blue? Ooh. So when they're asking us how many more children, how many fewer children, what kind of problem do we need? A minus problem. It's comparing, right? When we're comparing fewer, more, that means we're doing a minus problem, green and blue. So, hmm, we have to start with a, with a minus problem. We start with the biggest number. So what one has more, blue or green? Blue, so how many kids chose blue? Five, so we have five blue minus, how many, what's our other color? Green, how many kids chose green? two, five minus two. Okay, we can use our number chart or we can use our fingers, right? Five, take two away. How many are left? Three. So how many fewer children chose green? Three. Okay, so remember, when they're asking us how many more or how many fewer, we do a minus problem because we are comparing the numbers. We also can use we also can use our graph to figure it out. We can look at our things and compare. See, this stops here at two, and then we have three over here. So when we're comparing, right, we can look at our graph. Take a look at our graph. Okay, complete the picture graph to show the number of flowers. Here's our title at the top, flowers in a vase. We have red flowers, we have yellow flowers. We need to use this picture right here to fill in this graph. Each circle stands for one flower. So you wanna count them and fill in your vase. So I want you to pause. Okay, make your circles to stand for each flower and then hit play, hit Play to check. All right. So, how many red flowers are there? Well, let's count. One, two, three. So, you should have had three circles. How many yellow flowers? One, two, three, four. So, you should have had four circles. All right, so that is what our graph should look like, okay? The graph represents what's in the vase. All right, you're gonna work on your personal math trainer.